Good evening, brothers and sisters, and welcome. Yes, yes, it's me. But if you're surprised, Pastor Nathan and Brother Jim are not here with me because we're not having our Ephesians class or our Bible study for that, for that matter. But we decided to lay it on hold just for this week because it is Easter week or Holy Week as many people like to call it. And you know the importance is not only for one day, but it's celebrated in seven epic, meaningful days. Now, Easter is a couple of days away, and I think that when we hear sermons and talks about Easter, it sometimes kind of uses the resurrection about something that is in the future and distant that we go to when we die. But Easter, or the truth about the resurrection, was actually this explosive bomb that actually meant that God was ripping into the future, into the present, and in, per, in the person and work of Jesus Christ. In fact, primarily the resurrection is not about going to heaven when you die, but actually it is what the Bible calls a new creation. Now, of course, both of these statements are true, but the emphasis is on new creation. Jesus resurrected. He resurrected in a human body, by, which, by the way, that has huge implications. Jesus resurrecting in a body on this earth, that is what matters. Think about the dignity, the worth, the value that our bodies have. Jesus resurrected into new life, and that is what it will be when we do too. But it's about new creation. Now, let's take a very, a very quick overview of the Bible. That is the mission that the Bible is headed that this whole entire time that leads towards Jesus. The best way to summarize it is from the beginning. God created the heavens and the earth. Now, this is like a relationship, like a marriage. There's like two separate spheres cr created as one, kind of like a husband and wife, right? When they unite and they become one. Then sin enters the world, breaking apart God's sphere and our sphere. And there, there's human sin, rebellion, injustice, brokenness, and the list goes on and on. But God's promise from the beginning that he will fix the problem was to restore the world and put the two spheres back together. And it's amazing the way that he does that through a family and a nation, meaning Abraham and then Israel. But it keeps spiraling backwards to the point that he says, wait a minute, no, something bigger needs to happen that I need to set things right again. This long story that transpires for many years finally arrives to God's ultimate plan through the person and work of Jesus Christ, who wraps all these promises in the Old Testament, crashing on himself and wrapping it in himself and says, this is true of me. I am setting the world right. In a very peculiar way, being executed under Roman rule, and then coming back to life three days later. And the resurrection is so shocking. And even, I, I heard a scholar say that the New Testament in a way fumbles within the Gospels. Almost if there's no adequate way or adequate language to describe how explosive and how amazing the resurrection was. They didn't have a category for the future ripping into the present. For God's dimension to enter our own dimension. So, this is an exploding act of God in Jesus. Being that what well, Paul says, the, the first fruits of new creation. So, we see that phrase again, right? New creation. But it says that Jesus is the first fruits. Now, let's go back to the Old Testament. The first fruits were the offering that Israel had to take from their harvest of their first fruits, of their first productions. Fruits, vegetables, and grains. And were given from the very beginning to God, the first ones, and saying, thank you for providing all of this to us. 
So we're giving our first fruits, what we provided, what harvested the best that we have harvested, knowing that the rest comes thanks to your provision. So Jesus, as Paul says, is the fruit of new generation. So instead of pulling us out of this world, the resurrection of Jesus is the proving point that what God did for Jesus, He will do for us and the world. He's going to restore it. He's going to remake it. He's going to put it back together to bring new creation one moment at a time. And, at, and one of the other astonishing things about the resurrection is when you take a look back at the Gospels and the resurrected Jesus meets with the people is usually in their sorrow, in their grief, in their pain. Now, let us remember, because most of these were followers of Jesus, and He died a couple of days before, they were struck with grief, hurt, pain, suffering, and the ache. And then the resurrected Jesus comes in and meets them right in the middle of that and transforms their pain and sorrow into joy. And I love that because that is what Jesus is still doing to this day. The resurrection, or Jesus, is not about standing at a distance, waiting until you clean your act or you get your act together. It's like saying, okay, I'll wait until you get to heaven so I can restore you right then and there. No, that is not the thing. The resurrection actually meets you right in the middle where you are at. In the death of a family member, in a breakup, when you lose your job, when you're hurting, when you're in pain, when you're suffering, or when you're just uh, involved in the brokenness of this world, He meets you right then and there. Jesus meets you right there in the middle of the storm and He says, I'm going to bring peace, joy, new life, and resurrection right there in the midst of all your problems and tribulations. Now, my brothers, my sisters, the question is, do you truly believe that? So, this Easter, rest in that beauty that the resurrected Jesus has inaugurated your creation. He has put it into place and He is unleashing His kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Do you remember that prayer that He made with His disciples when He first taught them to pray? He's bringing that kingdom in here and that kingdom is already here. So remember that the truth of Easter is that the world was good and beautiful, but we broke it. And God is putting it back together. Jesus is the first fruits and He's continually putting it back together. But the most amazing thing that I just want to tell you about the whole importance of Easter, the whole importance of the power of the resurrection, I, I believe this is the most incredible thing, is that to me, He has chosen agents. The agents that He chose to put everything back together are the same people that are actually were responsible for breaking it, meaning you and me. So in this Easter, I just want to tell you that we were chosen. We were chosen by God. We're His children. But above all else, the resurrection marks something in all of us. It didn't just happen in their time. It keeps happening today. So I need to tell you this because this is very important. The resurrection marks a difference. So we need to get used to difference. We need to get used to that. And with that, my brothers and sisters, I leave you with that because that is the importance of Easter. Let us remember that it's not just in a month, that it not, it, we don't celebrate the, res, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus only when it's Easter time. No, we need to always remember and preach Jesus Christ crucified and then that He resurrected in power and in victory on the third day. May God bless you always.